hospital recovery in the second half of the year. Joining me now with their reaction and thoughts on the markets, Neil Hennessy is Chief Investment Officer of Hennessy Funds, and Dave Smith is Chief Investment Officer at Rockland Trust. Great to have you both here. Neil, I'll begin with you. What is your outlook for the back half, or, or is it even possible to have one? Well, I think there is, Kelly. Uh, you have to look at it in terms of how a manager manages other people's money. And this is where an active manager takes difference with an index. Within this coronavirus pandemic that we have, there's a lot of opportunities because what you're looking for is personal traits that are changing. So you look at people that are staying home, remodeling, putting in uh, garden beds, buying appliances, so like a whirlpool. Or you're looking about people are moving out of the cities because there's no nightlife. You could look at a Toll Brothers. You could look at, for instance, Crown Holding that we talked about a little over a month ago mm -hmm. that makes beer cans. And now there's a shortage of beer cans. And not to be funny here, but an active manager has to think outside the can in order to make the client money in the end game. And that's the difference where we are now. There's a lot of good companies to buy even within this pandemic. Neil, you're confident that you can make those picks and you kind of have that longer term view, that that kind of view on how the world's changing and and not just say, no, I'm going to buy big tech and ride that out because that's that seems to also be a winning formula. Well, Kelly, if you look at big tech, you look at Amazon, uh, Apple, uh, Google and Microsoft, you just take those four companies and that is about 12 percent of the gain in the Nasdaq this year. But more importantly, those four companies would add up to being the third largest stock exchange in the world, the U.S., China, and then those four companies in, in front of Japan. So you just can't buy an index. You have to look and figure out where are we going in the future and who can make money, be it if this pandemic ends or continues to go forward. Right. And on that note, Dave, let me bring you in. I know you guys own Microsoft. You own Facebook. You own Alphabet. Although you also yeah. own a lot of the time at home stocks like Home Depot, Scott's Miracle Grow, and Sherwin Williams, which is having a nice day. So, you know, why are you comfortable with those tech names? And, you know, what are your thoughts overall on, on how you see the back half of the year shaping up? Yeah, so in the fundamental side of the technology names that we hold, we look at them and say the fundamentals that, they are, that they're that they going through at the moment will persist regardless of kind of what happens with the pandemic. In the meantime, the valuations in the high 20s, low 30s on a price-to-earnings multiple basis are a premium to the S&P 500 for sure, but they don't trade at multiples of the multiple of the S&P 500 like some of the other FANG stocks do. I would use Netflix and, and Alphabet, excuse me, uh, Amazon as, as examples of that, you know, Amazon trading at over 100 times earnings is is almost five times the multiple of the S&P 500. And right. it's just very difficult for us to rationalize that. So even sp uh, speaking of the names that you do feel comfortable holding in big tech, as I said, I believe it's Microsoft, Facebook and Alphabet. We have a big hearing tomorrow. Um, there's going to be do. a lot of regulatory pressure on these companies going forward. For example, if there's pressure on Facebook to spin off Instagram, do you just have to adopt a wait and see mode in terms of that or do you think that there's a way in which you could end up owning all pieces of of even these broken up companies and still do fine? Yeah, I do think there's a wait and see attitude that you need to take with regard to that. I think the fact that they're having all of the CEOs in simultaneously shows you that this is just beginning. Clearly, each of those companies has a very different competitive dynamic in their operating environment. And so to bring them all in simultaneously to me is kind of uh, uh, the wrong way to go about it. You should take each one on their own and, and analyze the specific uh, you know, situation with each as it pertains to the competitive situation. But I think it's the beginning of probably a very long period of time where we'll, these companies will be in the forefront of the news. In the meantime, the, the fundamentals uh, of, of the companies that we own are in great shape. And we yeah. think the long-term trends coming out of COVID for, uh, the, uh, for example, the digital advertising space is, is very, very good over the intermediate long term. All right. Before we go, Neil, we're about to have a discussion about what's been going on with the silver and gold prices. Is there anything that's on your mind as you watch those asset classes lift off? Not really. I just I, I sort of look at it as an, an emotional trade. People are looking about how much fiscal stimulus we've had, how much the country's borrowing. Is this going to add to inflation pressure in, in the future? I don't think inflation's on horizon anytime soon. The feds are more worried about deflation than inflation. It could be a trade into the future, but it's going to be a long-term trade. But right now, it's an emotional trade when you get gold going from 1600 to 2000 Oh, yeah. A big, big headline. It, it certainly feels that way. All right, gentlemen, thank you. Uh, Neil Hennessy and Dave Smith, we very much appreciate it.